like that. We are going to start out with some movement in the beginning. So let's get started with that. I'm going to take my sweatshirt off here. So let's come to the top of our mat. And if you have blocks, I would recommend that you get those close by and a bolster and a blanket. Let's get started. So coming to the top of our mat, from here, we're going to allow the shoulders to roll back and just kind of bring some movement gradually into the shoulders. Good, and then from there, let the arms reach up. The hands come together and then take them up. And then forward fold all the way down. And take a moment here, we're gonna pause. And when you pause, you're literally gonna hook your thumbs into the elbows and drop down and let the head hang. Relax, release the head. Let the neck be loose. Good. So we're still kind of doing more of a Vata type of practice and then release those arms, bend the knees. Inhale, lift up. And pause, take a moment here. Now, if you have limitations in the shoulder, if you have limitations, just keep your arms opening up. That's fine, no big deal. And then from there, reach up and dropping down, forward fold. And now this time when we drop into our forward fold, the arms are gonna lift up behind the back, interlace your fingers and keep lifting. Same thing though, you do wanna relax that head. Let go of the head. We loosen the neck. Let the neck be relaxed. Good, and then from there, release again, bend those knees, inhale, come up. And again, we pause. So you can either bring your hands together in steeple mudra, or they can stay open. Steeple mudra means that you bring your hands together, drop the fingers, pointer fingers are together, and you cross your thumbs. Okay, and you're holding it in Ukatasana. Soften the face. And then inhale up, exhale, forward fold all the way down. And this time on your inhale, add an extension. And then exhale, step back, right leg lunge. Pause there. Then dropping the back knee. Inhale, reach up. Again, we're gonna go into steeple mudra, or you can keep the arms open and pause. Keep the tailbone drawing down, look up. Then from here, curl your toes under on the right foot and push up into the left foot, release, and then the arms come down and you rotate to the left. So you're lifting up. And then releasing down, step back into down dog. Take a moment here, draw the navel in, spread those toes, draw your heels down, and then lift up in the navel. So that belly button goes in towards the spine and then lifts into the lower ribs. So there's two actions there. Open up the armpit. And then from here, shift into plank and drop to your knees. Lower all the way down. 
And then roll back through the shoulders, lift up. Pausing in Cobra, pause. And then press back, down dog, press. Pick up your right leg and then step forward, going back into a lunge. So you're in a lunge and we pause. Then drop the back knee and we come back up with the arms into steeple mudra. You keep the pelvis shifting forward. Nice. Curl your toes under then on that left foot behind you, then push into the right foot and rotate to the right. Look over the right shoulder. Good. And then from there, release down. Lift your back leg in and step forward. Inhale, come up. Exhale, drop all the way down, forward fold. Take your arms up off the back, interlace your fingers. Relax the head. Bend the knees, release the arms. Utkatasana, hands come together and lift. Relax your face, draw the navel in, tailbone in neutral. That means it points straight down towards the ground. And reach up, forward fold all the way down. Inhale, add an extension. Step back, right leg lunge. Pause. Drop the back knee and lift. Steeple mudra. Keep those hands together or you can keep the arms open. Whatever works for you. Not everybody has the flexibility in the shoulder girdle. That's okay, you'll get it. And then this time we're gonna push into the left foot and then rotate, you have the option of either going to what we just did or drop down so that you're above the elbow. That right hand then goes to the shoulder, the left arm extends and then shift forward. So you're opening up. Then release, hands come to the ground and step back, down dog. Take your time, All right? We want to help with vata. It means that we have to move more deliberately. Vata wants to move fast. So if you've got a lot of vata energy running through your head, you'll notice that you're twitching, you're moving a lot, you're, you know, constantly adjusting, you can't seem to settle down. So we help that by getting into the pose and being still. Shifting forward into plank, modify to the knees if you need to, otherwise lower all the way down. Roll the shoulders back and push up, Bhujanasana, and we pause here. So even in the more challenging postures, we pause. And we let that vata settle. Pressing back, down dog. Nice. And then picking up your right leg and stepping forward. High lunge, hold it there. Drop the back knee, come up, steeple mudra. 
Now, if you're having a hard time with balance, walk that right foot a little closer to the edge of your mat. Look up. Then from there, curl your toes under behind you and lift so you can either rotate to the right or drop down above the elbow. The hand goes to the shoulder, so push. Open the shoulder, then extend your arm. And if you can, shift your hip forward. It's up to you. And then releasing, the hands come down. Stepping your back leg in. Inhale, come up. Exhale, forward fold again. Inhale, the arms come up off the back. Open up. This helps release tension out of the neck and the shoulders. Relax your head. Then bend those knees, Ukatasana. Steeple mudra, if you could do it. Bend the knees, draw the navel in. Take the arms right along the ears. Then reach, forward fold all the way down. Inhale, add an extension. Step back, right leg lunge. Pause here. Drop the back knee and lift up, coming into steeple mudra. Again, if you're having an issue with balance, just take that left foot a little closer to the edge of your mat. Draw the navel in. Pushing into the left foot, lift, rotate, look over the left shoulder, variation one. Variation two, you drop down above the elbow, the hand goes to the shoulder, extend the left arm. Now your next variation is to curl your toes under behind you, lift up. Then you're gonna release the hand to the hip and the other arm goes alongside the ear. Then swing the arm around and step back, down dog. And shifting forward into plank, modify to your knees if you need to, otherwise lower. Roll back through the shoulders, lift up, Bhujanasana. Pause. Keep the pelvis on the ground, drop your shoulders, elbows close to your side. And then press back, down dog. Picking up your right leg and step forward. High lunge, pause. Pause there. Nice. Drop the back knee. If you need more balance, take the foot a little bit closer to the edge. Reach steeple mudra. Open up. Nice. Then pushing into the right foot, lift. You're either going into variation one, variation two, drop down to the elbow and extend the arm. The hand goes to the, to the shoulder. Or you drop the hand to the hip, curl your toes under behind you, lift, and that arm goes alongside the ear. It's pretty challenging. Do your best. Bring the arm around. Step your back leg in. Inhale all the way up. And then exhale, we're gonna drop back down and step back into down dog. Shift forward into plank and lower. Nice and deliberate, nice and slow. Bhujanasana, come up. Press back, down dog, Adho Mukha Savasana. 
Pick up your right leg and step forward, warrior one. Inhale, come up, steeple mudra. Bend the knee in the front. And then we rotate, just like our warm up. You're rotating, variation one or variation two. You can bring your hand in if you want. Okay, or you can extend the arm. Okay, so the next time we go through this, we're gonna add variation three. We're gonna just get ourselves a little bit warmed up here. Bend, release from there, hands to the ground. Step back, down dog. Take a couple breaths there. And shifting forward into plank. Lower on your exhale. Lift up Bhujanasana. Press back, Adho Mukha Savasana. Again, a couple breaths. And then on your next inhale, step forward, left leg, warrior one. Reach up. Release, going into variation one, you rotate. Variation two, drop down to the elbow. Keep that back heel down, you guys. You can bring your hand in if you want. Or you can keep the arm extended behind you, whichever works for you. Back heel is down. Then from there, release. Again, step back, down dog. Shift forward, plank. Lower. Lift up, Bhujanasana. Press back, down dog. Hold it. Dang it. Okay, so we have an add on. From here, step forward, right leg, warrior one. Keep your back heel down, you guys. Open up. And then from there you rotate, variation one, no problem. Variation two. Now this time you're gonna do your variation two, keeping your hand at the shoulder and actually seeing if you could drop it to the chest. So open the chest, lean way back. Variation three, that back hand comes up and goes alongside the ear. Keep opening up the chest. It's big. Back heel is down. Swing the arm around and step back. Down dog. And shifting forward into plank. And lower. And lift up Bhujanasana. Press back. Adho Mukha Savasana. Breaths. Nice. Open up your armpits, you guys. So lift your armpits up, lift them up so that you're taking your shoulder blades onto the back. It's like you're expanding the chest. Picking up the left leg, step forward, warrior one and reach. From there, rotate. Pause, variation one, right here. Variation two, drop to the elbow. The hand goes back behind you. Take the hand to the chest. 
Variation three, this is an option. You do not have to do it. The arm goes alongside the ear. Back heel is down. Swing the arm around. Step back, down dog. Shift forward plank, lower. Lift up Bhujanasana. And this time we press back into child's pose. So big toes together and then open up your knees and release with your hands behind you at your heels or your feet or to the side of your feet. And then come up into down dog. Pick up your right leg and step forward. We're going to go into trikonasana. Drop your back heel and lift up. To line up for trikonasana, that front heel lines up with the arch of the back foot. Reach. And then drop down. And lift the other arm up. So what Vata needs is not only to go slow and be deliberate, to practice stillness in each pose, but also to build strength. Because vata is ether and air. There's just nothing to it. It's more fragile. So vata needs to have strength built, right? Through the practice. So we do want to build strength. See if you can drop a little lower maybe taking your hand to the baby toe side of the foot. If you're using a block, that block also goes on the baby toe side of the foot and you're seeing if you can deepen that pose. And then make sure that that torso lines up with the front leg and we are adding a balancing posture here. Release the arm, that left arm to the low back. Turn your head and look at your big toe. So if you are using a block, you're gonna take your block with you, bend the right knee, and then reach out the distance of your torso. You can keep the back toe on the ground for balance if you're needing that today, or start to lift it up. Both legs are activated. So you do not let that top leg get heavy. You bring it up, you activate. Turn your head and look to the side, and release your arm. Now, do not turn your head unless you feel stable. Build strength, build stability. This is what really helps Vata. Balancing posture forces Vata to focus because Vata gets scattered. Then releasing back down into Trikonasana. We're going to add a lunge. So the left arm swings around and then we open up Take the block to the big toe side of the foot and drop down into a half lunge. Go all the way down. Release your head. If you're a little more flexible, you can go all the way down to the ground. Now we are going to be adding a half hero pose. So half Varasana, Ardha Varasana. You're holding it here though, relaxing your head. Okay, so from there we shift our weight back. And I'm gonna turn so you can see. You may need a block or a blanket at this point because you're gonna shift all the way back 
And if you need, so sometimes the knee is not as flexible or you have knee issues, you will need to be up higher. Sometimes people need two blocks. That's fine. The right leg stays extended, okay? So that's what that looks like. Or you use a blanket. The reason why you're using a blanket is just to keep the pelvis even, okay? So you're not leaning to the right. The pelvis is completely level. If you can do that without a blanket, it means that you just need to shift your hip a little bit to the right. That left foot stays on the outside of the hip. And I can do this now with a level pelvis, okay? All right, and then we go back to start. Once you get down onto the elbow, you want to lift your pelvis and draw your tailbone down. If you are on a block, okay, if you're up higher like this, you may not be able to go all the way down onto the elbows. You might just bend your elbows like this. That's fine. See how far you can go. Everybody has their own level. Stay with what's right for you. It's your practice. Flat. So drop all the way down. Once you get to the ground, you do want to bring your right foot up, lift your pelvis, pull it a little bit to the right, draw your tailbone down, and then lengthen out that leg and then soften the breath. Can you relax? Can you be still? Find where you can. Now, if you are all the way flat on the ground, the left palm of the hand pushes against the left heel and you lift up. Go back to the elbows, pause. And then come all the way back up, pause. And then reach forward for the right leg. Pause, your hands can be on either side of the foot, that's fine, or the, the leg. Good, relax your head and pause. Okay, and then from there, you're gonna actually grab that right big toe and pull it in. So bend your knee, pull it in. You're either gonna bring it in to the inner thigh of the left leg, or you're gonna take both hands and scoop underneath the baby toe side of the foot on the right foot and pull the foot onto the thigh, closer to the knee, but eventually you pull it all the way up into the hip all the way up and then the right knee drops down. Now I am holding on with my, my left hand. I'm holding onto my foot and I'm keeping it pulled into my hip. And then my other hand draws the knee down. You do not wanna have any strain though here on the knee. So modify if you need to. I showed you three different variations. The other variation is to take a block and bring the foot onto a block. That works too. Always a way. Pause. Try to relax. And then from there, we twist. So you're gonna twist now to the right. Here are your options. 
You can just do a simple twist with the left hand going there to the outside of the right thigh. If you are a little more flexible, that right hand, okay, so the left hand presses against the right thigh. The right hand comes around. I'm going to use my left hand around, grab my toes. And so this is a bound posture as well as a rotation. Just do what's right for you. I didn't ask you to bring straps today, but if you do have a strap, you can hook the strap around your foot and the right foot. Look over that right shoulder. Good, and then release. Straighten out that leg, which is gonna feel really good. Then we take our body weight, shift it forward, go all the way forward. And then step back in down dog, which is gonna feel wonderful. Down dog, else if you need to. From down dog, shifting forward into plank and then lower. Lift up Bhujanasana. Press back, down dog. Picking up the left leg and stepping forward. Drop your back heel and again we rise up. And reach. Line up the front heel with the arch of the back foot and then lower into Trikonasana. Your hand can be at the shin. If you're a little more flexible, take that block to the baby toe side of the foot, or maybe you can have your hand on the baby toe side of the foot. Just keep the torso lined up with that left leg. Soften your breath. Feel strength from this pose. Stability. Stillness. Then releasing the right arm to the low back, turn your head, look at your big toe, reach forward with that left hand. Now, if you have a block, take it with you. Then you reach the distance of your torso, your torso, and then lift your back leg up. You can keep the foot on the ground, that's up to you. Lift, activate both legs, then release your right arm. If you feel stable, turn your head and look to the side. Strength. Stillness, be a mountain. Strong and steady. Then from there, lowering that back foot so you slide right back into Trikonasana. Swing your right arm around, lift your back heel and we are dropping into a lunge. Go all the way down, bring your block to the big toe side of the foot and release. And if you're a little more flexible, go all the way down. And then from there, we're going to lift up and we shift back into Ardha Varasana. So you straighten the leg, you take your hip to the left side, all right? If you're using a block or a blanket, you're gonna grab that, place it under so that the pelvis is even. 
even. Good, and we're going back. So then you release back onto the elbows. Now, you are higher than the blanket. You may not be able to do that. Remember, you might be going back and just bending the elbows. Hold on the tile. Okay, bending those elbows, dropping down, all right. And if, you're, if you've got a little more flexibility and you could do it, you can go all the way down. I gotta slide down for this. <laughs> then the left foot is going to come up, just pull your hip to the left a little bit and then straighten out the leg. And pause there. So whatever position you're choosing for yourself tonight, just make sure you're able to relax. Be still. And then to come out of that, you take the right heel of the hand, press into the right heel of the foot and lift up. From there, you lift up even more. And then from there, sitting up straight, reach forward. If you're having an issue with balance, you can have one hand down, that's fine. Use it as some leverage, push forward. Nice. Relax your head. Be still. Settle down the vata. By the way, vata does better with warmer temperatures. So when the temperatures are warmer, vata tends to feel better. And when it gets cold, that's hard on vata. All right, then from there, lift up. And we bring our foot in, you're gonna bring it in and you're gonna either bring the foot here to the inside of the right thigh, or you remember you have an option of putting that foot up on a block, it's another option. Or you take both hands, slide it underneath the ankle and pull the foot all the way up. So you can either be closer to the knee, that's gonna be a little easier, or eventually you go right into the hip Go right into the hip. One hand, the right hand holding the foot in, the other hand pressing the knee down. Hopefully you're doing okay with your knees. Modify if you need to. Settle the breath. Soften the face. Now, if you can bind, we're gonna do that here, otherwise, just gonna twist and rotate to the left, okay? But if you can bind, I'll turn so you guys can really see. What I'm gonna do is, I've got my left foot here. The left arm comes around the low back. I'm gonna grab it with my right hand and pull it around and grab the foot, okay? Then it holds on there. And then my right hand goes to the left thigh and pushes and look over that left shoulder.
and then release from there. That foot then releases, bring it down. You're gonna extend that leg out. We're then shifting our weight forward. So you have to use your hands a little bit. Come forward and then step that leg back, down dog, and we hold down dog. From there, look up at your hands and step or walk your feet in. Release all the way down. You're going to sit back. Sit back. Use a blanket. Come up on the blanket. Run underneath your sit bones. Pull your flesh away. I want you to be right on the edge there. Lift up really tall. Reach your arms up. Pause. Lift your heels up off of the ground. Be still. And then drop forward on your exhale. See if you can keep your heels up off the ground. Very nice. Soften the breath. Good, and from there, slowly, slowly lifting up. Take it onto your back, so you're gonna come off of your blanket. Take it onto your back and pull your feet in. Grab your heels and then push up into bridge. Now I do want you to make sure that your knees are not splaying out. So take a block between your knees, or if you don't have a block, just make sure your knees stay tracked in line with the front of the hip bone, not the outside of the hip, the front of the hip. And then walk your shoulders underneath you, push into your feet, push into your heels. Lift the chest higher. Push into your heels. Lift the chest higher. And then slowly releasing out of that. Pulling the block out, draw your right knee in, extend the left leg. Right knee goes into the chest. And then take that right knee across the body and extend your right arm out. And then releasing out of that. Left knee comes in, extend your right leg. Pulling that left knee across the body and extend the arm out. Good, and then from there, Pushing back up into a little bridge just to settle that pelvis. And then releasing and setting yourself up for Shavasana. If you have a bolster, you can use a bolster and place it underneath your legs. You want to make sure that you are warm. The hands are going to rest at the upper thigh next to the legs, palms up in a receiving position. Definitely cover your eyes, either with a dark cloth, an eye pillow, or an eye mask. Okay? Dark cloth, an eye pillow, or an eye mask. And then 
you want to relax. Okay. And let the body become completely still. Again, soothing that vata. Making it so that vata is able to calm down and settle down. Bring the body into stillness and then the mind merges with the body. Let that mind experience the stillness of the body. Keep softening the breath. Remembering the practice of lingering in the pause after the exhale to further support that stillness of the mind and the body. Relax. Feel that body connected to the floor, heavy, merging with the ground. Imagine that the body and the ground are one. Feel that stability. Know what stability feels like in the body. Earth in the body is that solid, stable part of ourselves, our bones, our muscles, our organs, all our tissues. Feel that physical body, that physical structure supporting you and the ground supporting the body. Every cell within you is part of this whole universe within. Millions and millions and millions of cells Imagine with each breath that you're breathing in strength, stamina, perseverance. Imagine that each cell within acknowledges the strength of your body. When we are relaxed, digestion functions properly and so does every other system in the body and our immune system strengthens. A strong immune system is directly connected to being relaxed, being at ease, getting enough rest and sleep.
Feel that building in your Shavasana. Good, and then from there, begin to deepen your breath. Very slowly roll to your right side and take a moment, rest there, and acknowledge stillness, even when you roll to your side. Feel your connection to the earth, to the floor. And then bring yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Once you are seated comfortably, you do want to lift out of the pelvis and lengthen the spine upward. Bring your hands together. Connect your thumbs to your heart. Close your eyes. Become completely still. Bring the mind into stillness with the body. And may you sleep peacefully tonight. Rejuvenate that body, heal the body, heal the mind, and awaken in the morning completely refreshed. Namaste. Good job,